Hey friends, we are here together today. It is Friday Night Live, also known as the Friday Night Painting Party. We're glad to be together. My name is Jed and I'm here with my good friend, Mr. Peter Stout. Peter! Hey everybody, good evening. So happy to be back with you all again. It's been a long, long, long time. So yeah, let's uh, let's paint, let's talk, let's hang out. We were thinking about it and trying to think, how long has it been? Do you guys remember, does anybody out there know the last time we actually did a Friday Night Live? I'm trying to think back, but I'd love to see if anybody knows a date because I think that it might be, well, it might be way back in September. But anyways... It is so good to see you all. Trish from South Carolina, Kathy from Dayton, Ohio, Sherry. Oh, it just went away. Somebody's name went away on me. Uh, Gretchen. Yeah, so good. So good. So good. Um, anyways, you guys know, I think actually, I think that we did one. Well, I know we did one in September. <laughs> and what's crazy I is do I don't that. remember if we did one after that. Because we did our master class in January. Mm -hmm. But... I don't know I if think, we did a Friday Night Live. Okay, I think we might have because I remember after John L and I got married, I think I did Friday Night Live once from Oh. Because my internet was down for like two days for no reason. Then I think I did it from her parents' house. And I think that was after we were married. Okay. So that, that would be after November 5th. So. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, we might have done one in December. Oh, that might have been we might have done one in December. Uh huh. Yeah, that's right. That's probably the case. Well, anyway, oh, nothing after September. I see somebody saying, oh. Mary says nothing after September. That's a crazy. Okay, guys. Well, okay. we'll try to be back and we'll we'll be doing some more stuff like this in the future. Totally. But I want to just show you my my uh, my painting surface. Oh, my goodness. This, I need to switch, switch it the old-fashioned way. Here we go. For some reason, my little remote control isn't working, but Bummer. okay. I just I just painted this with this neutral gray color. And uh I don't remember. I am super sorry if I did not um give you this reference photo in advance or not. But if you remember if if you participated in the last masterclass, this was one of the extra reference photos that I put in there. And I loved it, but we I didn't really get a chance to paint it. So I thought this will be a good chance to paint it. Plus, I really love the atmosphere that it has and kind of the the way that it it will uh allow some experimentation really on on my end. So oh nice. Yeah. I like how it's a, it's a bit different than your typical Jed Dorsey. It is. It doesn't have really sunlight at all, um, but I think it'll be fun. Yeah, totally. So Phyllis, Susan, June, Dolly, Bev, Patricia, Barb, so good to see you all. And um, who is ready to get started painting? Type it in the chat that you are ready. And if you were born ready, let us know that too. <laughs> Bonus points. Bonus points. <laughs> oh, yes, man. You gave us this reference photo. Good, oh, good, good, good. We're getting more organized around here, guys. We promise. <laughs> Peter, uh, I don't know if you want to put it in the chat, but if just in case somebody didn't get it by email or something like that, it is in assets in Discord. Just up a little bit if you want to if you want to post it in oh, the chat. Gotcha. But um, yeah, thank you, Denver. You like the painting so far. It's looking pretty good. Now, I'm just kind of sitting here waiting because this is really wet still right here. And I thought it would dry a little bit faster. But I'm going to get started with the draw in stage. And um, man, I saw some really, I saw like this, this really fun tree. What was it? It was like a. It's like these um, these trees in a in a painting, just in a, in a, the Plain Air magazine, like this month. There, are, it's it's on the cover. If you if you have Plain Air magazine, aren't those amazing? 
Jim Wadark, I think that's how he says his name. I'm not 100% sure, but he's a great artist. And he he has these super interesting trees on the on the cover. And what I love about it is you go back to where he has the article written in the back. And you look at the reference photo from it and, and you're like, uh, it's just such a good example of, of an artist being an artist and making creative choices that are accentuating the interesting parts of the painting and, and drawing that out in the design and just using that artistic freedom to, to do it. And so anyways, if you have a chance to look at the cover of Plain Air Magazine, uh, take a look at how he designed those trees using what was in front of him, but also his imagination. And you go back to the, uh, to the part of the, 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 uh, where the article is, it's kind of like further back in the magazine to see some of that, but it's, it's really cool. And, um, so anyways, that was kind of my inspiration as I was thinking about some of this here today. Not that I'd seen that before I picked the reference photo for this or anything, but just as I was thinking about this today and right now sitting here looking at it. So, but I'm like, you can tell that this is really wet here still, right? It's, but we got a road that comes could blow dry it if you need to. There, dry. Yeah, I, 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 I could. But you know what happens sometimes when I blow dry? I have so many little things plugged into um, a couple <laughs> outlets here in the studio. Flip the breaker. <laughs> Yeah, the, no, I don't think it would. Uh, I have to have the heater going at the same time to blow the breaker, but I think I can get away without doing it. But fun times, fun, fun, fun times. Someone asked, uh, what color is on the left that you're mixing with the red on the right? I think it's black. Yeah, so, okay, I, I just got Mars black over here, and uh, yeah, it was mixing that in and then i had a little bit of the gray that i also grabbed in there are you using benzi burn Good. orange this is benzi burn orange here uh -huh. it's basically like a burnt sienna interesting and yeah it's just it's just kind of a dark orangish brown never heard but, of that picture yeah 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 that that's a color that I just had some left over of and I started putting it on my palette because I was trying to get rid of it. You know, sometimes you have these leftover colors and it's pretty similar to, to, um, to burnt sienna. So I figured hopefully it won't throw people off too much because if you have burnt sienna, you can, you can just substitute that. But what I, what I kind of am thinking about here is the order that I'm going to do, do this because I like the idea of usually I paint from the front to the back. But in this particular case, because there's so much back here that's, that's in kind of the misty area, what I was thinking about doing is actually putting down some of the misty area right kind of off the bat so i'm gonna grab this uh white gray a little bit of blue i want it to be really neutral but kind of towards the green because there's still some of those trees back there so a little bit of blue a little bit of yellow mixed in and i really also want it to be ethereal and push back quite a ways. So right now I'm just going to start putting it down and uh, we'll kind of see how, how it looks. 
as compared to the foreground trees and uh do you often make your own black from blue and red shade with a touch of another color uh yeah sometimes i i'm not afraid of using just black from a tube so i i'll do that also mm. but it depends that's why i do have the benzy burn orange that's that's one of the colors that i'll use mixed with the ultramarine or maybe even phthalo and, nice. and it can turn into something like that we have 660 people watching well wow. welcome you guys it's so fun yeah. to have everybody i uh was happy to I threw out a text a little bit ago because I was like, man, we haven't done this in a while. I want to, I want to, let's hang out with some people. This is going to be fun. Good times. For sure. Uh, Jed, have you ever experimented with painting water soluble oils over an acrylic underpainting? Well, so I have, um, I've only used water soluble oils like one or two times and it was over it was over some kind of acrylic underpainting but I like I said I only did it really one time and then I just it was right when I was starting we started acrylic university <laughs> and so I was like well I'm not going to keep going with this too far right now because I I needed to start doing more stuff with the acrylic lessons and everything so it's it's something that i know a lot of people do and i have only done that one one time or twice but i think it's cool i i like the idea of it for sure gretchen i have so much missed this <laughs> so oh, yeah. you guys. i know it's, it's really fun it's good to be back back together again Thanks for joining us, everybody. I'm going to mix up some darker color here for this foreground and start getting this value of the grasses, which are pretty dark. You know, in the overall painting, there's there's a lot of uh, darker values in here, mid-tones and, and darks. And it helps with the the feeling of the background being further away and all misty because it's kind of the contrasting part of the painting. And for me, it's always helpful to get some of that in so that I can use it as a reference point in my head as to the, the values and the structure of the painting. So we're going to try to, I'm going to be like a pilot right now. All right, we're taking off from the gray uh, background, and we're hopefully going to land in a finished painting in about an hour and 15 minutes. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, I like it. Which next week, I'm actually going to be taking a workshop with our beloved diana shine and uh that i mean not from her although i i should take one from her but we're actually taking a workshop together which is going to be so so fun and uh we're going to be learning from mr william hook and nice actually, yeah i have his let me just grab this real quick because I have his book right here. And it's it's a book that I bought a couple years ago. And it's full of all sorts of amazing pictures of his work over the years. And uh, he's truly a master acrylic painter. He's done so many just incredible, incredible works. And... I mean, it would take quite a while to go through the whole paint, the whole book and show you everything, but I'll just give you a few snippets here. 
but that's going to be down in Scottsdale at the Scottsdale Artist School next week. And uh, I think that we might even have a little get together dinner if you're in the area and you want to come through. Um, I think that Renee is going to send something out to our members. And uh, anyways, isn't that cool? Like those, those paintings are so great. Really cool. So I'm quite excited to, to be able to do that. He's, he's kind of getting to the stage where he's, not going to be teaching that much more he told me last year i saw him down there because i almost went to that workshop last year but couldn't at the last minute but i ha happened to drop in on it and he said he said that that this year was probably going to be his last year of teaching so wow I was very certain to sign up <laughs> when i heard that i'm like oh i better get in on that one for sure not this year So we've got kind of a fair amount of stuff that's kind of in the middle ground. I would consider this 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 uh, foliage and the trees on this side. They're kind of going to be middle ground, meaning they're they're being affected by the the misty atmosphere some, but definitely not as much as the stuff in the back. So this is like, in some ways, it's kind of like painting mountains that are far away in a really, really big, vast scene where you have layers and layers of, of atmosphere and distance, you know, that covers miles and miles and miles. But in this case, it's like, well, those trees that are back here, they're probably only, you know, maybe a couple hundred yards away. They're not very far away, but they're pushed back a lot. So we're just exaggerating or, or uh, noticing those differences. And, you know, maybe we will exaggerate some of them to, uh, to show the distance and to show the atmosphere, but it's probably less exaggeration in this than it is just trying to be accurate with, with what's in front of us and what we see. So what's going on in your guys' lives these days? What was Friday like for you today? Anything fun? What's good? Tell me what's good. I told you one thing. I'm going to Scottsdale. Going to Scottsdale and taking a workshop next week. Very cool. Really looking forward to it. And who knows, Peter? Like Maybe we can... I can figure I can talk him into, <laughs> into doing something. Uh, like this. Uh, <laughs> I have to say that's always kind of in the back of my head. I'm like, I know hey, do you think I might be able to, you know, get him to do something. <laughs> I know I can tell. <laughs> That'd be fun though. That would be fun. Granddaughter here for the weekend. It's Saturday. Oh, it's Saturday where you are. That's fun. Alberta weather is warming up. Hallelujah. Yeah, man, our weather, Peter, didn't it get cold today? I it bought did. a dozen eggs for $1.50. Hey, that's a deal. Screaming deal. <laughs> that's a deal. Um, I went to see John Wick. Nice. I've never, I haven't seen any of the John Wicks. I know there's a new one. Somebody spoiled the them for me, though. Oh, really? The day. Yeah, yeah. What do you mean? They told you about him? Yeah, or... I was like, I think I was streaming or something like that, and somebody just jumped in chat, dropped the big spoiler at the end of the film. Oh, really? <laughs> like, oh. what? what is wrong with you? You're a little psychotic, bro. <laughs> uh, but anyway. Were you thinking about watching them? No, I don't even really know what they are, to be honest. I'm never I'm been like, super interested. So, yeah, I'm, I'm like really out of it. My I, knowledge... I, I, all it is is um or not not all it is but the, the the premise is that some some people kill this guy's dog and then he takes revenge on all of them i think oh really <laughs> yeah i think that's the premise that's funny well yeah. i i've had several people tell me about shows that they're watching and stuff and and 
and or they'll ask me are you what hey, have you been watching this or that and i'm like nah, i don't i'm sorry i feel like i don't i don't really watch anything regularly Same. if we sit down it's like oh we might watch a movie um you know with the family, same way yeah uh i don't mind though i don't i i don't I don't feel like I have, I don't feel like I'm missing out too much. Yeah. Of course, that's probably because I don't watch it. Right. Maybe yeah. When I, when I watch shows or something, then I, I do get kind of get into them. Remember a couple years ago, I got really into the Mandalorian. Oh yeah. <laughs> but the new one came out and I still, I'm, I don't even know if I'm going to watch the new one. Really? The new season. Really? Yeah. I mean, I, I read, I always read reviews before I decide to like get into it. Because, you oh. know, sometimes, like, they put out a new Lord of the Rings, whole new Lord of the Rings series, you know? And Oh, yeah, yeah. But it was most, like, it was basically most people didn't like it, like, compared uh -huh. to the original movies. And so we watched the first one, and then I was like, ah, I'm not going to watch it. Uh -huh. But I wouldn't have known unless I read the reviews. So, because it's kind of an investment of time, right? It is. Oh, look at this clean house today. My oldest son coming from Seattle tonight. New kids in the new kids in the hall. Kids in the hall. Oh my goodness, that's a funny. Have you ever heard of Kids in the Hall? I have not. It's a Canadian. Um, it's a Canadian show. Okay. I I remember watching it a little bit when I was growing up because we had Canadian TV, so it was. Uh, but I know it's pretty popular. It it was pretty popular in in Canada, but it's kind of a comedy, but I, I actually don't even really remember much about it. I just remember the name that people liked it. I want to ask, uh, so will you be at the planner convention? Yes, I will be at the planner convention. We're going to have a booth there. Woo! I'm going to be there. Uh, Dad's going to be have a booth? there. What? Philip University yeah, will have a booth? No, it's wow. a miniature painting challenge. Miniature challenge booth. That's and cool. uh yeah, but it's gonna we'll we'll all be there. It's gonna be awesome. Gonna have a good time. We're gonna have we're gonna have giveaways, all sorts of fun stuff. So yeah, we're kinda like working on that right now with figuring out figuring out the details, but yep, we'll be there. It's going to be a good time. Yeah. It's fun. I mean, I, I've i been to the convention. This will be my third one. And so I'm, I'm, I always like it anyways, but this, this one's going to be extra fun because Diana's going to be there. Uh, Amy's going to be there. Nice. And Jamie, Jamie's going to be there. And uh, anyways, it's going to be a lot of fun. It is. That's very cool. Yeah. Okay. So I kind of, I kind of like, I'm looking at this from a distance. I'm kind of standing back right now. And I kind of like the, the feel of, what it is and what i think is so cool about paintings like this i is like it's so subtle because there's so much of the painting is muted and kind of gray you know this is gray but it's just got a little bit of blue and a little bit of yellow in it so it kind of this one leans a little bit more towards blue this is a little bit leaning more towards green then you bring you can bring in a little some spots of color up here which we can add more and it's just going to, this stuff will stand out so much against the muted background. But then when you got that muted background, also what's going to be fun is as we get, you know, the subtlety of the, those trees and the nice white, I think it's going to be a really, a really cool effect that we'll end up with. your background paint drying. Yes, this part is pretty much dry over here now.
Yeah, I almost I almost painted the background and I, I was I do have this zinc white. Somebody was saying they were thinking that I might glaze over it to push it back. And I might. I might do some more of that. Um I might do I might do it in in a in a like I might do some of this shaping of it right now and then come over it in a little bit to to distinguish it. Um, well, this is to distinguish it. And then in the end, like some of the, the zinc white will make it even more ethereal. Someone's asking, will you please post pictures from the class in Arizona on Instagram? Oh, yeah, I will try. I will try to do that. Yeah, I was, man, I was totally tempted to like try to just film all of it <laughs> oh yeah yeah <laughs> like illegally i mean you know i don't know what the rules are but probably not supposed to but like wouldn't that be kind of awesome if i just like had my phone and filmed the whole thing and then that would be pretty cool yeah uh yeah but i'll we'll we'll definitely take pictures and post pictures that'll be a lot of fun actually very cool Who's who's been to the Scottsdale Artist School? I know Peter, you you we walked through it. So you we know did. we went to the other briefly. You know that place. Yeah. You know the other place I'm gonna be hitting up there, Peter. Grand Canyon? No, no, no. Think think closer to the Scottsdale Artist School. And think Oh. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We're at those burgers. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Rehab, rehab burger. <laughs> Yeah, that that that's a good little burger joint that Peter and I discovered when we were down there about three years ago. Man, is that right? Three years? Is that is that about? Yeah, what it, was? it feels like way longer, but it's only three. No, actually, it was four. It was 2019. Uh oh, right, 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 right. That's but, crazy. Yeah, we lost a year in there for some reason. I can't remember what happened, but <laughs> yeah. Oh man, but good times, good times. This place has a burger that they call well. What's it called? I I'm trying to think of the name. I don't remember the name for sure, but but basically the burger has a. It has sriracha sauce peanut butter jam bacon and probably some other stuff but those are like the main flavorful uh parts <laughs> that that you really notice and peter come on man like that thing is so good isn't it it, it was so good yeah yeah it, it, it was the kind of thing that was surprising you know like you get it and you're like uh i'm not sure but i'll try it and then it's just it's like oh why would i not get this every time and then we started trying to make it when we were back home That's i remember happened. that they weren't even close to as good well they were they weren't but they were still they were still good i i still was like you know what this combination is worth worth like pursuing you know uh-huh agreed yeah good times good times okay so i'm working on the pattern back there because that pattern is like really abstract and i can make it pretty much whatever i want but i like i like the feel of the trees that are kind of in in reality in the picture so Try not to change them too much. At least the idea, the idea of them. So I'll ask, do you always just use one brush? Um, no, I've got two other brushes in this hand. <laughs> but, but one, one, one thing actually. Again, I read this. I read this in in this book. He was. I was just reading a little bit today, and he said. 
a lot of times these days he uses just one brush for the whole painting and it's a number 12 which is let's see i don't know if i have a number 12 here these are number 10s this is a number 10 i think but it's just a little bit bigger than this and he, but he, he kind of said i like doing that because it stops me from being too fussy with the details and things like that and i've i've done that kind of thing like quite a bit in the past where and and if you're around me enough and you like know even some of the way i would encourage somebody who's wanting to paint more loosely you know that's one of the practical ways that i i'll tell you to just okay just don't use a small brush just use your big brush the whole time and so it's kind of fun you know like i can't do really tiny detail things but i'm getting enough of the essence of of the background that i think it's looking okay and i'm i'm kind of okay with it the way it is so I'm just going to keep rolling with it right now. Oopsie. And then I'm going to actually, in this case, I don't always do this, but in this one, I'm going to, I'm going to come back and I'm going to do a little bit of the positive kind of painting over top of this. Cause right now I'm just shaping everything by painting the background but i'm going to end up coming back on this one and doing some of the some of the branches and things on these foreground trees with another little brush and um and then there's also back here i love this tree there's a tree that's off at an angle kind of comes out So I'm going to put that in also. And this white. When we replay this will be on AU or, uh, yeah, yeah, it'll be, it'll just say, it'll live on our YouTube forever. So you'll, you'll be able to always be able to watch it after this. Unless we have some copyright issue. Which, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just joking. I mean, you never know, dude. Yeah, you, you genuinely never know. never know. No joke. Yeah, you've had that experience before. I sure have. Peter's an old YouTube. He's like in the YouTube Hall of Fame. <laughs> no. I have done lots of YouTube. And I have been screwed over by them. Yeah. Anytime you're working with, you know, it's like, they probably own this content and they have the right to do with what with it, whatever they want. So yeah. you can say, yeah, you can watch it forever, but really it doesn't matter what we say. Yeah. It really only matters what they say. Okay. Uh, Go ahead. Yeah, no, I was just going to say, insofar as it is under our control. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Yep. We plan to leave it here. Okay. I'm loving this. This is fun. And all that, all that background, you know, just, that was all just painting the negative shape back there. Now what I need to do, because if you heard me earlier, I was saying that I think, oh, actually I need to come and do just a little bit more of that, what I was just doing. Cause I didn't finish some of these areas. I think I want to come and just uh, finish up some of the tops of these trees a little bit more. And then when this is kind of kind of more done, I'm going to let it dry and then we will I'm going to come back with the zinc white and do a little bit of more of like a faded look i'm hoping up at the tops so that's what i was saying it was like some of this is a little bit of experimenting and that kind of thing for me um we'll 
we'll see how it all goes but we're gonna have fun in the process Okay, and then over here, there's actually, I'm going to put a little bit more of the light gray. Okay, I'll let that sit now for a bit and I'm gonna come up to the front and I'm going to work on getting some more vibrant color and the values and everything in up here. So I just mixed in a little bit of phthalo blue to my green, to my yellow, and it's gonna be stronger, stronger color now up here. So I'm always wanting to well, I'm just adjusting it slightly because I, I, I want it to be strong, but I want it to go with the rest of the painting. How long has Jed? I just looked up and I saw a, pic, uh, a question from Candice. I've been painting acrylics for, let's see, 20, uh, 20 something years, 21 or 22. Jed, do you see the mushroom next to the tree? Jed, do you see the mushroom next to the tree? Hmm. Looking for it. Looking for the mushroom next to the tree. There's probably yeah. something. <laughs> I'm trying to find the mushroom too. <laughs> I don't. I'm sorry. Yeah. In the reference photo, is the background bluish? Yeah, you could totally glaze it after it's dry. Yep. And I'm going to, I will do a little bit of glaze a glaze with zinc white so and if we wanted to if you wanted to add a little bit of color to that you could also so you could add just a tiny bit of blue into the white and that would lighten it but also kind of turn it a little bit towards the blue i don't do a lot of glazing on live streams because i don't do it well for one i don't do a ton anytime just because I paint a little bit more directly most of the time. But the other reason I wouldn't do it on a live stream that much is because it takes, it's like the, the layer, you know, you have to dry, you have to, you know, put, put it on. So it just adds more, more time to something in, and in a live stream kind of painting context, I'm usually, I want, I want you to see something get, closer to done and and uh i know that that's going to take a little while so i don't normally do it but i'm going to try to do it today and uh we'll see how it goes we'll see how successful it is now we've got this road that i haven't really touched at all and one of the things that i would say is i'm you can kind of tell I'm I'm trying at least to think about the the order that I'm doing things because I'm thinking about timing and when something needs to be be dry so that I can come back into it that type of thing and you might not be painting on a time frame like I am but one thing about glazing and that type of thing is it is really helpful if you know you're going to glaze, if that's part of your idea, being able to think ahead and think, okay, when, what order do I want to do this in? Because you might have a very specific effect that you're going for. And then you, you know, like I'm going to paint this and I'm going to do this and then I'm going to glaze the whole thing and I'm going to wipe off some of it and it's going to leave this effect. But you just kind of, as much as you can think about that kind of thing beforehand, it's worth it's worth uh, whatever planning thought you have. 
because it, it can be helpful. Otherwise, you'll miss a good opportunity sometimes to, to do a glaze or something like that because you, know, you might not want to do all the detail work or like put on the final colors or what you think are the final colors and then realize, oh, I was going to glaze it. And then you're going to have to paint some of the areas over again. So I'm going to come back into this here. Oh, Kirk. Uh, that's awesome. He just says that he just got a container of Vancouver Gray. And Hi. look at this. I got my Vancouver Gray the other day, too. And in fact, this one isn't even yet open. I was going to use it today. In fact, I will. Just, just for this occasion. I'm going to break it open. Because Vancouver Gray, if you don't know about it, it's... It's a color that is made by a company in Vancouver, BC called Chroma, Chroma Artist Acrylics. And I found this color when we lived in Vancouver and I, I don't know, I just bought some, I think. And the guy probably explained it to me and I liked it. So I kept buying it. And now I've told, you know, people about it over the years and, and, uh, but what's cool about it is this is just, it says mixed pigments. So they create their, you know, all their various colors throughout a season. And as they're doing it, they're mixing it and they, some of the color, some of the paint spills out and they just scoop it into a bat, like a big bucket. And over the course of that season, they, just keep mixing in all these various various colors and pigments and stuff that that have fallen out of the normal you know mix and at the end of the season they they mix it all together and it becomes Vancouver gray and uh, and I love it because it changes slightly every every season depending on how much of each color you know they mix and how much spilled out and everything like that but it's this very unique color that they said when they told me about it, the guy said, you know, if you look at it under a microscope, you see all the color. Like it's a very active kind of alive gray because it's not just black and white put together or black. And what they often do is they add like yellow oxide and, and white to make gray, or they might put in different thing, but this is like, red and yellow and blue and green and violet and all these colors put together with white and and everything and it turns out to be this interesting gray so i'm glad you got some kirk super fun yeah this is a little bit more on the brown brownish side and and that's what's so interesting is you you don't really know exactly but this is it's pretty much I've realized that it's it's kind of similar to this, pretty similar. Um, every time I've gotten it, it might be a little bit different, but it seems to land a little bit kind of like a brownish, slightly brown gray. I think one time I got it, it did feel a little bit more like it had a little bit more of a bluish undertone. But it's a fun color. I even just love the story behind it. Okay, somebody oh says gambling does that with their oil colors and it becomes a a different gray they call torrent gray. That's fun. Palette scraping. Yeah, I know. You can do it with your own palette, too. That's very true. In fact, um, I can't remember if it was Ovanus Barbarian. He used to do that. And he would mix his own gray. And he would get all these various grays, you know, because every time he'd scoop it into a little pile and, and keep it off to the side. And then when he started his new palette, putting out those colors, he had these really pretty grays that he would be able to mix into.
So we're still waiting on some of that to dry. And while we're waiting, we're working on the foreground area more. So I'm thinking about these, these a little bit more vivid greens. Whoa, had a little bit of dark still on my brush. You can see that was answering a question that somebody asked me, you know, I get asked quite a bit, like, do you wash your brushes? And I, I do, but I don't always in between everything that I'm doing. So you can see, I'm just kind of grabbing more, more paint and, if it's if it's just uh, like from one shade of green to another shade of green, generally I'm not going to mix or I'm not going to wash my brushes out very much. But if it's a if I'm trying to create a really clean color, I will wash my brush and dry it out really well, so that then when I'm picking up the clean color. I'll also usually clean off an area of the palette so that that's nice and clean. So I'm going to go up into this area up here and I'm going to do a little bit more. We'll add a little bit more. I see there's some branches that come down that are a little bit darker. And someone's then, asking what the oh sorry go ahead Jed. Oh, no you go ahead i was just gonna say somebody's asking what the name of the book that you showed for a second was oh yeah this is uh it's william hook and it's called a retrospective and it's basically just his it's just a, a bunch of his paintings that's a picture of him right there you can see and then it's just tons and tons of his paintings in here and they're they're just absolutely gorgeous oh nice. my goodness i'm having a hard time holding it but yeah super super fun i i got it i got the book when i was at the scottsdale artist school i believe i got it two years ago so i'll come in here and just see if I can bring a little bit of of uh, subtle detail. It's not there's not a lot of it's not a lot of detail in here. That's um, when I say subtle detail, I mean like these value changes in this area are pretty soft. There's not a ton that is. You know moving from a dark to a light or something like that it's more like one value different like from a mid-tone four to a mid-tone five or something like that so eight brumbow says with ann pumphrey we miss you jed we were just saying how much we loved your uh loved your class together come back and do a class in italy ah that's awesome well and we'll see you next week. <laughs> That's fun. Kate, nice to hear her from you. Oh, man. what? Wait, what did they say? Let me see if I can see that. Oh, it went away. Um, uh, I can gonna, show it. Go. There we go. Okay. Come back and do – oh, an indie. Oh, yeah. okay, an indie. Oh, an I indie. Said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like – Yeah, I read it Italy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what made me. Th I was like, "What are they talking about? Italy? Uh -huh. Hey, let's do it. I like it. Italy sounds good. Yeah, yeah, that'd be fun. Who was I talking to recently? I I feel like I was talking to somebody from uh, Indianapolis recently, and we were talking about something related to art. I can't remember what it was though right now. That's awesome. I see somebody says they just ordered the book. Oh, and Darby says that they they bought she bought it on my recommendation a while ago, maybe, and has have used it a lot. So yeah, that's it's a great book. 
super fun. I just, I love flipping through a book like that. I mean, I'll do the same thing on a website, right? Like where I, I go to a gallery website where I know that there's artists that I really like. And I'll just sometimes, it's kind of like, it's like the cheap way to walk through a museum. You don't have to leave your house or anything like that, but you can still see beautiful artwork. It's not the same as going to a museum, but. When you're desperate, you do desperate things, right? <laughs> Some days, you know, when you feel when you when you feel like you, you're not not being very inspired and like my most common thing. Well, uh, let me just ask you guys, what do you do when you're not feeling inspired? What what where do you turn to find inspiration? I'd love to hear what you guys do. Yeah, I'd like to I'd like to come back to Indy. Actually, one of the things that I was thinking about doing, but it, the timing is bad. But I I still I'm just, I'm so I'm so I'm so dumb that I <laughs> uh, forgive me for saying that. I know somebody will be offended that I said that, but um, I I I I don't learn from mistakes very much. Like a lot of times, and I always overestimate what I can do, and. And so one of the things that I was thinking about recently was like going to the first brush of spring, which is in a plain air event in Indiana. And it, it happens right after we were coming back from Scottsdale, which is terrible timing, everything like that. But I'm still super tempted. Every time I think about it, I'm like, oh, I wish I could go to that event. It's in Southwest or South. Yeah, it is Southwest Indiana. But a super super fun event and uh i it's like my favorite event it's like i don't know why i like it so much but i see friends there it's it's like super low-key really fun place to be feels like the old stomping grounds that kind of thing so man it's not indie exactly but it's close and it you've got me thinking about it again now Okay, so go for a, a walk outside and look for the beauty in the most simple things. I love it. Go for walks in nature. Walk outside. Instagram. Um, watch demos on YouTube. For uh, Watch people like me. Wow, that's awesome. I, I was Somebody watch my grandchildren paint. I get inspired by all the classes in AU. I reorganize my studio and go on a photo hunt. Play with alcohol ink. I go outside and look at nature. Go in the garden or woods for inspiration. Yeah, see, that's the, that's like exactly what I do. I do all those things too. That's um, awesome. But my go-to probably is to go outside because mm. that's the the place that I I just sometimes it's like I just need beauty, and I'll just go outside. But Instagram or a website or something like that or a book is nice when. Maybe it's really bad weather out <laughs> and you don't want yeah, to go outside. <laughs> totally. Or it's late at night or something like that. And you, you know, it's you're just kind of sitting around home. So I'm thankful for those types of places to get a little bit in, of inspiration. Okay, so feel like this is starting to starting to uh, come together in terms of the the overall feel of it and when I say that what I mean is like if I squint my eyes and look at it and then, and then I kind of like look at the reference photo it's starting to resemble it make sense values are I think making sense. And there's always little things that can be adjusted. So that's what we'll keep working on. But I think overall, 
overall it's kind of kind of kind of working okay okay so I'm gonna see about let me just give this a quick test this is all pretty dry up here so I'm gonna grab my zinc white now this is golden fluid acrylics here and it is um, going to do it's gonna do a nice simple white glaze for us so I'll put it on and I'm just gonna kind of uh, uh, there's more water in this brush. I didn't think this brush had any water in it, but it turns out it has some water in it. So I need to uh, just kind of washed it out or I mean dried it off. I'm going to come back because I don't really want, I actually wanted this to be more like a, it's already thinned down. I don't, I don't think I need it to be thinned down anymore. So we'll just see if we can make that background, like I said, a little bit more ethereal and fade up into the top of the sky. You know, just as it gets higher, there's more atmosphere in between us and the tops of those trees. So we can do a couple layers of this, a couple coats, but... We'll just put on a coat, see how it looks when it dries. Isn't that cool? I like that. I really, I really think that zinc white, I, I don't know if it was because I was watching a Michael O'Toole demo, but I think it was either, I knew about it before, but I don't know if I was really using the fluid acrylics before I saw that. And then I saw, I think I saw it in him. Sometimes I think of things on my own, but a lot of times I get ideas after I see somebody do something and. I think I saw somebody use use it. It gave me the idea like, oh, I've been doing that, but I've been mostly just using thick zinc white and mixing it with water. But if I, or medium, but if I just do this, you know, with the golden fluid acrylic could save me a bit of effort little time just break it out every time I want to create a really ethereal scene and even these trees that are closer to us as they go up these branches they're they're even affected I can see a little bit of mist in between us and these branches that are up here I like it better without the glaze. <laughs> hey, that's all right. Use straight golden fluid, uh, golden fluid acrylic on the brush for the glaze. Yes. Yeah. Jed rules the California planer. Can't remember the name. I'm not sure what that means. Tracy, but if you explain it, I'll, maybe I'll see it and be able to respond. I look up every once in a while at my screen and see what you guys are writing. So sorry if I don't see everything and respond. 
to everything. Don't worry, but... there's no way we could respond to everything. <laughs> oh, okay. Um. You participate in any planar conventions? Yeah, Jed will be there at this upcoming planar convention. Yep, yep. Absolutely, it's going to be fun. With I already said this, so I'm repeating myself, but I'm going to be there with Diana Shine, our good friend and co-teacher partner here at Acrylic University, Amy Erickson, who's amazing artist and friend. And uh, we're going to have a booth at the convention which is going to be fun. We're, we we're like, we need to make this the most fun booth. So oh, I don't know what exactly we're going to do, but our goal is to be fun. That's, that's one of my main goals in life actually is to have fun. <laughs> I swear. It's like, remember Peter, when we're listening to that one thing from, um, it was actually Tony Robbins in that he was talking about like how he had that awful, he had a bunch of phone calls to make and he didn't want to do it. It's like, how am I going to make this enjoyable? And he like just sat down in his, he like got himself a drink and sat in his hot tub and made all the phone calls from his hot tub. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but it's kind of that idea. It's like, you know, there's so many things in life that are kind of hard. Like my knee's been hurting for the like honestly for about a year mm -hmm. over a year like a year and four months or something and i was so bummed out about it i was like i don't even know if i'll be able to play basketball again all this kind of stuff and then it started finally feeling better and about i don't know maybe a couple months ago i started playing basketball again mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. i was like i just realized how much i missed doing that you know it's like it's it's not that big of a deal but it's for me it's just it's just like adds so much joy so now even though my knee has started kind of hurting again <laughs> like i'm still gonna play i don't care if my knee hurts i just i'm actually wearing a little brace right now uh -huh. under my yeah because it's like it just it's like i'm just gonna go with go with it right now and i mean I, i'm not doing stupid things i'm not like trying to hurt myself or anything but but mm -hmm. it's like it's too it's too fun and there aren't that many things that i get it that much joy out of you know early in For the morning sure. 30 in the morning so <laughs> why not right for sure man so i want to i don't want to paint every leaf and um I want I want to come in and some of this is kind of as I'm looking down at this uh, I'm I'm kind of leaning over to the side because there's a bit of a reflection where the where the paint is is still it's still kind of wet from the zinc white so mm -hmm. I'm leaning over to the side but just trying to look at the pattern here. So much of this type of thing to me is about the pattern of the light and the dark and where the trees, you know, like the leaves are all, all essentially, um, it's kind of a they're all the same value so we can work at work with them basically as a, a mass of value and we don't have to paint all of them all the leaves individually we can paint the outliers like the things that are kind of towards the outside and we'll be able to make sense of most of the rest So I want to make sure that these trees are solid enough. I'm just looking at them right now and I'm thinking, actually, I think they could be a little bit more solid.
And I don't necessarily mean um, bigger necessarily, but in this case, I kind of am making them a little bit more substantial. I guess these, these, I actually want these, some of these fence posts to be a little bit bigger also. Just so that the size correlates with with the trees a little bit better. But I'm also thinking about like with these trees, when I say substantial in my head, I'm thinking part of it is how see-through they are. Like there's a, they're a little bit, um, they've got a little bit of a purple tone to them right now, which I don't mind. I actually am adding a little bit back into this one, but it was kind of see-through transparent in some places and I think it needs to be more opaque. In general, or would you normally wait longer to paint after adding the wash? In general, would I paint wait longer before adding the wash? Is that what the question was? Uh, sorry, after I in general, would you wait longer to paint after adding the wash? I'm assuming is what they're asking. Oh, oh yeah, because up here, yeah, probably I would have let that dry more huh? uh, because I came back in kind of quickly to, you know, and I I could have come down here actually and started working, which probably would have been better. Also, um, I didn't need to go directly back up into that, but yeah, I think, I think it could have been a little bit better because it would have, you know, this, this part would have been easier to see for one thing when I was painting it, but also would you, it just would have worked a little bit better. Mm -hmm. but it, it's okay. I, I don't mind, you know, it, it's not that big of a deal to me on, on something like that. It's just, but yeah slightly i think it would have been a little bit better would you ever come back over with the zinc glaze to add depth to the mist to this yeah to i think mist, that's what you're I'm assuming yeah, yeah. And I and that was actually what I was kind of doing earlier when when I did that up there is I was I was kind of trying to push that back, but like for instance, you're I think one of the things that you're kind of saying or at least what I would maybe do, I'll just do it. Let's just say I'll just do it right now, um, instead of talking about it. But I might just come and put a little bit of this down, and there's. There's another layer back here of, of, um, of tree, right? It's like, so the thing is that, that, that happens though, is I would pro I, I'll do this right now and we'll just see kind of how it works because what I'm going to do is like this tree right here comes down and then there's something back further. But what I would probably do more than use the zinc white is I'd probably just tend to use titanium white for this. And I would smudge things a little bit more. And it's going to do basically the same thing. Um, this works pretty well right now. I mean, I think... I probably put on too much zinc white when I first put it down. And so I might've made it a little bit harder on myself than I needed to. But if I have the correct amount of paint on here, I think it's going to be working fine. Sometimes I've found that zinc white can dry a little bit. 
darker like like it looks like you're creating more atmosphere and then it dries and it actually wasn't as much atmosphere as you thought but you can kind of see yeah i mean that that pushed that back right like so we have another layer back there now so exactly i mean you can you can use zinc white in that way just i'm gonna just put a little bit more on my brush and hopefully i mean i'm gonna try to do another i'm gonna maybe try to pick out one more tree or area that we could do that um and see maybe i'll just grab this tree here But yeah, zinc white's a fun, it's a fun pigment because there's not a lot of light colors that are transparent. And obviously it's titanium white is not a transparent white. So you're never going to do a, a glaze in this, in this way, really with anything other than zinc white. Um, so it's a fun color. Opens up some interesting opportunities. And you can also, you know, you can still smudge it and do different things. So like you can use it around the edges, you know, if you wanted to make softer edges around the outside of certain things, you could do that too. So I'm I'm sitting here and I'm looking at the the painting and I'm just thinking you know just about like how it all looks. You know, I'm I'm such a negative shape painter. I don't really love the way that these kind of um like the way that they actually look the, the leaves. So I might come back over that with some more negative painting later. I might, I'm, I'm just kind of looking at it all and trying to see where, where I might still make some changes or not. But I think that in some ways it's the feel of the painting has been established and I, I, I like the overall, the overall feel of everything. which to me is a really abstract word to talk about with art. Like it's a, the feel of the painting. I mean, what does that mean? But when I'm saying it, I just mean, I think that it, it's representing like what I was going for. And this scene to me, it does kind of have a feeling. It's, it's a very misty, moody day and so i mean this painting now kind of has that misty moody atmosphere <laughs> i'm trying to not use the word feeling <laughs> so it has an atmosphere to it though so this is me using titanium white it's mixed with a little bit of brown or something a tiny little bit of blue and if i was doing the same thing to try to create a layer of atmosphere with that i would do this i would come back and i would i would do little subtle like looking at little subtle value differences i would be smudging you know the edges to try to make them soft things like this and uh 
just a little bit different, you know, way of way of going about it, but trying to achieve a very similar effect. Looking great there, Jed. Oh, thanks, Peter. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think uh, getting getting close to getting close to being able to call it done. So what I'd do is I'd come back through here. There are still some, some areas that we can come in and bring in this dark. So I'll see if I can do this in a way that hopefully will not look painted on. That's kind of what I was saying about, like, I, I really love the way that Un the negative painting can look and so sometimes I'm more critical of the brush strokes that look like they're plastered on top but it's it's also much it's like a very much more practical way of doing something like this instead of trying to cut around every little detail Kelly Steindorf says we just had an earthquake. Wow. Whoa. Where are you, Kelly? Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. And then also, I'm assuming because you're still typing in the chat that it wasn't too bad. <laughs> yeah, hopefully not, man. Yeah. San Diego. Oh, wow. It doesn't come down that far, so I probably overdid it a little bit, but okay. Now I'm going to add a little bit of just a little bit of dark around some of these edges. So what is on your plan for the weekend? Anybody have anything? I asked something. Did I ask that before? I don't think I asked that exact question, did I? I don't think so. I think you asked if uh, what people are excited for. Okay. What's up this weekend then? Not much. I'm looking forward to to resting and uh playing with my brother yeah what are you gonna do with him uh, tomorrow plan? morning we're going to a board game store in everett we're gonna play board games with some people there. Oh, are you really yeah. oh good yeah i'm looking forward to it that's fun yeah for sure mary willis is going to party nice i'm going to spend time painting that's awesome Cherry Blossom Festival. Oh, and hey, guys, if you ever, like, if you paint something this weekend and tag us on Instagram, we can probably reshare it. So we love seeing your guys' work. So that's a good way to show us is if you just tag it or tag us. Who do they tag? At Acrylic University. Very easy. All right. There it is. There it is. Okay, so... 
now I'm actually bringing in the lightest lights. So I haven't really used straight up titanium white until right now, but I am going to do it here and we'll see if we can bring that silver, light silver feel to this painting, which is what I say to Renee. If, if it's a cloudy day, I like to think of it as a silver day, not a gray day. It's cloudy, but it's silver. Just like our Everybody cat. Our cat name is Silver. It is. Let's see if we can pop out a few more details, little things. It's what I like about painting this this way and kind of ending with your lightest lights is is that you really you really can kind of um, I don't know it just is kind of like this game of building and you're building up to this final place where you're bringing in the, the lightest values and uh, if you've set the stage for it it's it's actually like a really fun fun part of the game right like you get to see your work from the past kind of come out uh jed uses princeton catalyst um blats yeah. Great brushes. Yeah, I love I love these brushes. Super super nice, fun to work with. A touch of white adds more depth. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it's just going to add like one more one more layer back there basically. For sure. And it always, honestly, it's always kind of surprising to me because when I, you know, when you, you're used to looking at your painting for a little while and, and you think you're looking at a light, your lightest value, but then you come back in with something that's lighter, it it's like your your brain has kind of been fooled for a little while into thinking something was white and then right. you see white next to it. <laughs> you're like, oh, that wasn't white. This is a very light gray. Final four. Oh yeah, the final four is happening this weekend. I don't even know who's in the final four. I don't either. All I know uh, is it's... only thing I know is that somebody, a number 16 seed, beat a number <clears throat> one seed in the first round for the second time in history. That's all I know. Well, and unfortunately for anybody who's from Indiana, well, maybe not Indiana university fans maybe they were happy with that but uh, it was purdue who lost oh, they were the number one seed they oh lost. Really? yeah it was like i know it's such a rare thing mm -hmm. but i'm i don't know 
somebody can probably correct me, but I feel like Purdue has had a couple really poor performances in, in the NCAA, you know, like tournament. I don't know. It's probably been a while maybe since they had another one like mm-hmm. that, but I feel like there've been a couple heart wrenching <laughs> like losses like that, where you're just thinking, no, not, no, not Purdue again. You know, because I probably saw a that Purdue fan out there going, don't remind me. I know. Yeah. Seriously. It's so painful, you know, because like with something like that, like basketball is a hard one too, because a lot of sports like football, if a team is better than another team, it, it, it takes a lot to beat that better team. Mm -hmm. But if a team is better than another team in basketball, it Mm -hmm. actually, it takes some, it takes like, you know, it takes effort. I mean, it takes a lot going for you, but mm-hmm. you can have one or two players get absolutely hot on the underdog team mm-hmm. and, and have a couple players go cold on the, 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 you know, the better team or whatever. And uh-huh. it can change the, the whole thing. Like, just like that, yeah. you know, it's not like a football team that has a massive line that right. like, there you you can't just get hot against a massive line like you're just not going to be able to move them you know what i mean like and and stuff like that so you can have a few fluke plays but it's why like betting in the in the um march madness is so like (laughs) it's way different than than they do betting in other events because there's so much volatility in it it's like totally a different ball game you know why that is is just the nature of basketball or yeah, basketball is a harder – it's a harder sport to um, to know what's going to happen because because of that. Because uh-huh. people get hot and people get cold and, and it's a one – it's also the NCAA tournament. It's just one loss and you're out. Right. So, like, it, it, like, in the NBA, you got – oh, yeah, you might lose a couple games. But, like, to, to win a series, you have to win four games. So, right. it's much, much different. That's what it's good. Yeah. No, Excuse that's me, what I makes it why they call fun. it. March. Yeah, yeah. It is. It's so. Yeah. It's just a crazy, crazy time. That's pretty cool. But who is playing? I didn't see if anybody said who's who's in the final four. I don't. Because no, I didn't see. It's it's actually pretty small. It's like got a pretty pretty weird. Uh, at least like the late late eight was had it like Creighton couple mm-hmm. teams like san diego state like these teams that you don't normally mm-hmm. see there oh this is oh, cool man. there's a comment that said this is my first friday night live and i really enjoyed it thank you oh good yeah it's fun That's to be awesome. back we have we haven't done this in a long time but it's really really part of what we 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 love hanging out having a good time creating art together yeah and so we uh hope that you had a good time too. We also want to invite you to participate. If you have not participated in the miniature painting challenge before, Mm -hmm. we have several different ones that you can participate in and they're super awesome. I know that there's a lot of people out there who have and do, but we are opening up the second round for this year in June. And that means that you can get early bird pricing right now. If you go to miniaturechallenge.com, Peter, you want to put that on the, on the, I do. Uh, already made a banner. You can, you can kind of go through and see what is available. Cause we got, I've got the original miniature challenge that made, uh, that was kind of like the start of everything. And that's, super awesome go through that you got one from diana shine which is amazing these are 52 weeks of painting lessons that you can get and um uh, basically one every single week yeah you get it dropped to you every week and there's no time limit there's no pressure on it the idea is that it, it's just to give you inspiration to paint and mm-hmm. and it comes regularly you don't have to think about it you don't have to come up with your own ideas you just can sit there but if you want to come up with your own own ideas, you totally can. Like a lot of people, I've I've noticed, at least some some people will 
use the idea of the lesson, but use their own reference photos or, you know, like right. come up with their own kind of theme. So you can use it however you want. But the idea is that you are inspired and painting on a regular basis. And that's why we drip it out to you over the course of 52 weeks or as long as the challenge is. Diana has a portrait one also available. Amy Erickson has an amazing one that we launched mm -hmm. this year for the first time. And then I came out with another one this year that is actually like I'm creating it still because um, we launch it and it's like at week 15 or something like that. But I'm still creating it as we're going through the year, which means mm -hmm. you still have an opportunity to send me your photographs because I'm. it's called Painting Across America. And I'm. I'm looking at one, we're, we're painting one scene from every state in the United States. And so it's, it's actually really fun. I've had such a good time and awesome. We're, uh, we're, I'm like learning so much about the United States and different States that I didn't know were so interesting and beautiful. <laughs> and I'm like, Oh my goodness, this place is cool. So anyways, Oh my goodness. Look who is here. My wonderful and amazing little Willow. <laughs> hey, Willow. Willow. Oh. Hi. <laughs> Good How to see you. you. Willow, you want to say bye to everybody? We're about to wrap up the night. Bye. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. It was a wonderful time, and mm -hmm. we yeah. love you. We believe, believe in, in you. you. And we're thankful Thanks for you. you. <laughs> and what else? And what else? And what else? Well, <laughs> if you're in Arizona, we might see you next week. So yep. anyways, from Peter and us, Peter, you can say bye. I'll stop talking. But we love you. We believe in you guys. Yep. We love you. We believe in you. And uh, we'll see you again very, very soon. Bye, everybody. Okay. Bye.